All right, folks, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're gonna get going here. And um, uh, good morning, Nagar, good morning, Faye. Uh, we're gonna get going here. And uh, good morning, I hope everybody had a, a good weekend. I know the weather wasn't too cooperative on uh, yesterday and parts of Sunday, but Saturday was a nice day. So I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, this CMA presentation, um, is uh, the first time I've done um, this presentation in a virtual setting uh, like this. So if I fumble around a little bit, uh, uh, please forgive me. Um, I'll do the best I can to get you through this. I think this is probably a little more difficult to do than in a classroom setting, but I think we all have to get used to these virtual trainings. And this is the first time I've done this uh, in a virtual setting. So. Uh, be patient with me. If you have any questions, um, if you know how to use your mute and unmute button, that's great. Or simply send me a chat that's at the bottom of the page and I will look at questions as we sort of go through it all and try to answer everybody's questions. All right. Uh, just let's have a quick look here and we'll get started. Everyone's good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so CMA, a, a comparative market analysis. The overview that we're going to go through today is we're going to look at the basics of appraisals. We're going to go through an actual CMA. I'm going to show you how to do the CMA. I'm going to show you where to find TREB training videos. We're going to talk about previous listings, statistics, and the final CMA. And so that's just a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at today. So the first thing, of course, is the basics of appraisals. So number one most important thing um, in the appraisal world is the difference between subjective and objective views of what you are looking at. A subjective view is not based on facts. Subjective views are personal opinions. Personal opinions do not count. It's as simple as that and it's probably the number one mistake that when people are looking at particular houses to, um, uh, to uh, uh, do a comparative market opinion uh, appraisal on, um, you have your personal opinion in there. Um, a good example is paint color. Oh my goodness gracious, look at this house, it's all in ugly green. Well, green is an easy paint to fix up and it's your own personal opinion that is influencing your decision on the value of the house because of a yucky color. Maybe um, you don't like um, maple um, uh, kitchen cupboards, maple, you know, wood or maple or oak kitchen cupboards. Um, maybe you only like uh, cupboards that have melamine finishes on them because they look more modern. That is a personal opinion. It is subjective and it does not count. One of the most common subjective um, opinions that is out there that I'm sure most of you will be familiar with is a swimming pool. Um, you know, is a swimming pool worth more money or is it worth less money? It is a subjective opinion whether a swimming pool is worth more money or less money. Um, some people think that four bedrooms are worth more than three bedrooms. Well, that, that can be a subjective opinion as well. And we're gonna talk about bedrooms a little bit more in, in, in a few minutes. Objective opinions are based on facts. And so you have to take, when you are doing an appraisal of a property, you have to take your personal opinion out of the equation. It's as simple as that. The object, objective is based on facts and facts only. And so you have to throw your personal opinions out. It's so important to remain objective when you are doing an appraisal. Knowledge, the basics of appraisal, physical inspections of the homes in the area. You know, I have a lot of people out there and, and it's, a, it's a fault of new agents for sure. It's also a really, a uh, big fault of the situation that we're in right now in COVID-19 that it's really difficult to do a physical inspection of homes in the area. I mean, open houses aren't allowed. 
Um, everyone's discouraging showings to a large degree, but we're going to fast forward a little bit into the future where things are going to start to open up and people are going to find a little more comfort and be more comfortable with this kind of thing. Somehow, you know, take at least the virtual tour of houses in the area that you can do today. I know a new agent that has signed up with us a few weeks ago. She has um, I've done a lot of the uh, virtual open houses. She's taken a lot of the virtual tours of houses, that kind of thing. Uh, but nothing replaces the uh, physical inspections of homes in the area, um, for sure. Um, uh, to get back to you, Don, in the quick, set, quick start session, we asked that people go see a minimum of 60 houses in six weeks for new agents so that they start to learn what houses are looking like. If you guys are looking at pictures online, the 20 pictures, actually they allow more pictures on Trev now. If you are just simply looking at pictures online and trying to take make a determination of a value of a house from a picture, it's really hard to do. I was a pretty good real estate agent in my day. I could take 20 nice pictures of a terrible house. I specifically remember going into a kitchen that there was junk on all the kitchen counter. You wouldn't have believed the shape of the kitchen and it was, just, it was just brutal. And I went with my arms and I went like this and spread my arms across the counter like this and moved all the junk and crap away and took a nice picture of that little corner of the kitchen only and it looked like a great house. So you have to be really careful with those kind of pictures. Other agents take, do even worse. They take terrible pictures of a really nice house. And so now you've discounted that house. So somehow, and I know it's difficult right now, uh, but physical inspection of homes in the area. Of course, a physical inspection of the subject property is, you know, you gotta go see the house, you guys. Um, I know that there's lots of agents who just kind of know the house and guess what they do? They look at a previous listing to see what the inside of the house looks like and look at the 20 pictures. Now that's, a, that's insane to do that, that is crazy. If you're looking at pictures of a house that's five years old, you're making a, um, I mean, the pictures are five years old, you're making a big mistake. I mean, you need to go see the house. And even today, in today's world with COVID, you need to go see the house. You need to take the proper precautions of washing your hands and bringing hand sanitizer and bringing Lysol wipes and touching everything is an absolute minimum. Have the seller of the house open the doors and turn the light switches on so you don't have to touch anything. Stay six feet apart, of course. Um, knowledge, what is happening in the real estate market? Are, are values going up, down, or remaining the same? And how can you know what's going on in the real estate market? Well, talking to other real estate agents is always a really good idea and reading all the blogs about real estate, looking at market watch is always a very good uh, idea and a source of information, that kind of thing, so that you have some clue of what the values of the properties are, the property values going down. So if you're looking at a house, for example, that the property values are going down, then you can look at it and you can look back at what's going on and try to get a, a value of the house. But maybe you have to talk to the seller about discounting the price a little bit and show him the facts from Market Watch on why, you know, the house isn't worth what it was, um, you know, two months ago. A great example of that. Uh, once again, I'm going to pick on the same uh, woman who joined us a few weeks ago. Um, she showed um, she showed and put in, I believe it was uh, three offers. Everybody had their their condo priced as what it was worth at the beginning of March. Okay, in the 470, 460, 480 range. And uh, finally, yesterday, and congratulations, you know who I'm talking about here. Um, uh, she put in an offer on a place that was priced correctly, and I think it was about 440, and the price had come down $30,000, which is about right, because they've come down about 9% since March. Now, they're still the same values as last year, but finally, a real estate, the listing agent knew what to price the house at and it had multiple offers and it sold. So um, you have to know what's going on in the marketplace as well. Any questions so far? I'm 
Okay. Chattels. Chattels. In almost all cases, chattels do not count. Okay. The fridge, stove, washer, dryer. Let's face it, in the GTA, pretty much all houses have fridge, stove, washer, dryer, dishwasher, sometimes a microwave. But you know what? Uh, four or five thousand dollars worth of chattels isn't going to make a big difference to a million dollar valuation or an eight hundred thousand dollar valuation. So chattels in almost all cases do not count. Now, I have run into places where chattels do count, and, and often that's in a cottage property. And in a cottage yeah. property, sometimes a boat is included in. And a boat can be a very expensive thing. So you do have to kind of look at what is included. Uh, but in general, for our, um, if for our cases, uh, chattels do not count. Bedrooms and washrooms, like I said, we were going to talk about this. Subjective, OK? So I often ask the question, it's hard to do this online, but um, is it uh, a three bedroom or a four bedroom house worth more or less? I don't know if anybody wants to have a stab at it. Does somebody want to say, is a four bedroom worth more than a three bedroom? Does anybody want to give me an answer? Here's the fact is that a four bedroom house will only be worth more if the square footage of the house is bigger. If the square footage of the house is the same, it becomes subjective. Yes, everybody is saying yes. A four, oops, sorry. A four bedroom home is worth, is worth more. But what happens if it's the same size house, you guys? Then what happens? Is it worth four? Is it four bedrooms worth more than three? It's subjective. Um, let's see. Uh, Andy Hurdle says four small bedrooms would not appeal to me as much as three good sized bedrooms. Exactly, exactly. And so you do have to be really careful. Um, another example that I have about a subjective um, uh, thing is, is my own house. We bought a new house a few years ago and uh, we're talking to the, the sales lady that was there, very nice woman. Um, and uh, we were looking at what was available and there was all sorts of properties with the big backyards and big front yards and all that. And we looked at the, at the uh, subdivision plan very closely and we bought, you ready? We bought the house with the smallest backyard and the smallest front yard. And why did we do that? We don't want to mow the lawn. Okay, we did not want to buy a corner lot that's got the big boulevard that you have to take care of. And so you have to be really, really, really careful when you are looking at stuff and it's your own personal taste, all right? It's more about square footage when it comes to these questions, all right? Another question that I often get when it comes to washrooms, is a house with an ensuite more is worth more than a house without an ensuite. Anybody want to have a go at that one? What do you think? A house with an ensuite worth more than a house without an ensuite. So one is uh, depends, one says yes, one says it is more on demand. And you know what? The question once again is square footage. If you have the same square footage house and one has an ensuite, and let's say the other one has a, a bathroom across the hall, but now you have a bedroom that is all of a sudden 40 square feet bigger or 50 square feet bigger, some people are going to choose the bedroom that is bigger. Okay, some people are going to choose the one that's a little bit smaller and has the ensuite. It depends who's buying the house. In the case of the ensuite and the, what I just said, the scenario I just said, I mean, if you've got six kids that you're sharing the bathroom with, well, that's a whole different story. If it is a, a couple like Debbie and I, um, just the two of us, do we really care if we have to walk across the hallway? No, we really don't care. Why should I pay more money for an ensuite? So you got to be careful about this stuff. When it comes to bedrooms and washrooms, it is more about the overall square footage of the house.
depends on location and potential income. Oh, well, if we're thinking about investments, it, it's a different story. The, uh, I appreciate the comment, but this is, this is not necessarily about investments because we're not looking at cash flow in this one here. And so I'm not gonna touch cash flow in today's presentation. Time. You can adjust for time for simply going to market watch. Okay, market watch is in Treb. I would think that most of you know where that is. If nobody knows where market, if somebody doesn't know where market watch is, send me a quick email afterwards and I'll show you. But you can figure out the adjustment for time. And when we go to CMA, we're going to do an adjustment for time. Now, when it comes to time, obviously, you want to get something, you want your comparables to the subject property. You want your comparables to be hopefully reasonably um, close in time, right? But let's, let's, let's go back quickly to um, what just happened again in March as compared to now. Are you gonna use a comparable in March to now without adjusting for time? And the answer is no. We know just by reading the news that a, a house in, in March to a large extent across the GTA has dropped by 9%. Now, could you use a house that has uh, sold last October or last September? Probably because we're just about the same as last summer, last fall, we're just about the same pricing as we were. And so you have to be really careful for time. Now, obviously, once again, you wanna use something that's reasonably close unless you've had what's happened in, in the last few months. The other example I have for that is uh, the, the spring of 2017. Uh, geez, you could appraise a house at $1.3 million in about, um, let's call it the end of April, okay? And that same house um, in the middle of May was only worth a million bucks as it dropped 30% in value. So once again, you have to keep in touch with what is going on in the real estate market to be able to have a, a good idea of what's happening with time so that when you're using comparables, you want to use the most recent, a week or two or three is probably okay. But guess what? At, on the second week of March, if you use a comparable sale on the second week of March and you're trying to do a home in the last week of March, it's already too late. So you really have to have some idea of the values of what's going on relative to the time um, uh, frame that you're using. Square footage is objective. All other things being equal, a larger house is worth more. So the lot size is basically equal. The quality of the finishes are basically equal. Um, you know, the, the, um, the amenities in the house, whatever the finishes on the outside, you know, all of that kind of stuff. All things being equal, a larger house is worth more. Let's talk about that for a minute. Most of you uh, who've been doing this for a while are gonna know this. For those of you who are new, this will be new to you, um, new in the industry. But what you see on MLS listings um, is if you see a square footage on MLS listings, and it's very rare that you actually see a square footage unless it's in client remarks, um, what you generally see is, for example, 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, right? Uh, you see 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. You see 1,100 to 1,500 square feet. You see 2,500 to 3,000 square feet. But let's talk about 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. When you are doing an appraisal for a house, square footage is really important, okay? For example, you could be looking at a comparable property that we're comparing to the subject property. You could look at a comparable property that has 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. Your subject property has 2,000 to 2,500 square feet as well. You know what? Your subject property could have 2,499 square feet. And the comparable property that you're looking at could have 2,001 square feet. And so essentially, you have a house, two houses that are almost 500 square feet apart. 
that's really a huge spread. Two houses, one is, they both say 2,000 to 2,500 square feet. One house is 2,100 square feet. The other one is 2,450 square feet. You have a 350 square foot difference in those two houses. So how is the proper way to do this? Okay, for square footage. Most of you, I think, will know that you can pay $5 through um, uh, the Geo Warehouse or through MPAC, I should say, it's through MPAC, not through Geo Warehouse, I'm sorry. Um, through MPAC, you can pay $5 and you can get the actual square footage of the property. When I, when, when, what I would suggest is certainly you need to do that for the um, um, subject property. And you need to do that for your three comparables. When you're doing a CMA, you should do three comparable sales. That is, that is normal, okay? Three homes that have sold. So to do a CMA, that'll cost you $20. The good news there is that when you do purchase those square footage um, reports, you get a receipt and you, these are tax deductible. So you're not actually paying $20, you're probably paying 13 or 14 because six or $7 will be reduced by taxes. So it's not costing you an arm and a leg. And this is one of the first times I'm gonna talk about differentiating yourself from your competition. A lot of people use the TREB CMA, and that's what we're going to show you as well. But not too many people will spend the 20 bucks to get the actual square footage. It would be a real, real, real shame if you went to a seller's house, okay, and you had no idea what the square footage was, and you're telling him of the comparables of 2,000 to 2,500 square feet in this example, and he turns to you, or she, I'm not a sexist guy, but uh, anyways, uh, he turns to you, the seller says to you, well, you've used that comparable. It's a lot smaller than my house. And you didn't bother to pay the five bucks to see that that comparable was 2,010 square feet and his house is 2,450 square feet. So you must, pay the money. I know it's $20, but it's tax deductible, and you should really be checking out the square footage of each house. Almost worse, and, and a lot of you know this as well, you're looking at comparables, and there is no square footage. It's on the same street as compared to the subject property. The, um, the comparable is on the same street as compared to the subject property uh, to compare it. And it, there is no square footage, but because it's on the same street, you're going to want to use it. Okay, it's a great, it's a great comparable. Oh my goodness, it's wonderful. But it turns out to be 400 square feet less. You guys have got to pay the five dollars to find out what the square footage is uh, for these properties. Okay, it's really, really, really important. It's a failing, I think, of the Toronto Real Estate Board that the square footage for houses aren't mandatory and, and the listing agent shouldn't, should just have to pay the $5 and don't be lazy and use MPAC as a reliable source for square footage. Where I came from up north, it was mandatory. You did not have to have, you, you had to have square footage, the exact square footage or you weren't allowed to post the property. It's a real problem here when it comes to appraisals to, to get the square footage right. Just let me have a quick look at the chats here. Oh, well, you know, that's a great, so Gisela's question is, if it's the same square footage, same lot in the same area, one is the bungalow and the other one is a two stories, there are no comparables for a bungalow. How do you come up with value? Well, what I would do in that case, since everything is the same except one is a square, one is a two-story and one is a bungalow, what I would do, Gisela, is, is I would take a look at demand for the bungalow. 
And I think we would all agree today that the bungalow is probably worth more than the two story because there's virtually no bungalows out there. And there's a lot of people looking for bungalows um, to be on one floor. And so how much more? I would search far and wide to, in different areas for bungalows um, to see how much they have sold for. And you could compare them to two stories in other areas and try to come up with some kind of an average number, Gisela, okay? Um, another question, where do you pay to find out exact square foot? You go to MPAC. Um, if you remind me, Lynn, when we get to TREB, I can quickly show you how, okay? Just remind me so I don't forget, Lynn, and I, I will show you, okay? So the five big items are, Location, 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 location. Uh, we've all heard that, of course. Um, when you are comparing uh, properties to the subject property, you want to try to get the same location, obviously. Um, I'm going to show you how you can go outside of your location if there are no subject properties. Um, but obviously in, in the GTA, I almost rather more adjust for time then move locations. In other words, it's pretty hard to be looking at a subject property in Newmarket and have a comparable house in, I don't know, um, Rosedale in downtown Toronto to give you a really a big spread of difference. That's going to be really hard to adjust for. Whereas it's probably better in Newmarket if you can't find some kind of a comparable house really close then maybe go back in time a little bit because you can get a pretty accurate um, adjustment for time, the percentage adjustment for time by going to um, market watch. Square footage, uh, we've talked about square footage a lot already and uh, we, we will talk about square footage again when we are in the um, actual CMA. Uh, a garage is another big one. Uh, there's a huge difference in value between uh, one bedroom, or sorry, one bedroom garage, a one car garage and a two car garage. And we're going to talk about that as well. We're gonna talk about finished basements and we're gonna talk about overall finish. Those five items, those are really the five big items that you guys should be looking at, okay? The location, the square footage, garage, finished basement, overall finish. There is lot size as well. Lot sizes are a different uh, kettle of fish to um, try to um, adjust for. There is a way to do it, but it, it's complicated. I'll show how to do it really quickly, but we want to try to get lot sizes to be relatively similar, okay? Right, so that's, um, uh, Kirti is asking about lot frontage, and we're gonna talk about that, Kirti, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, okay? The, um, Kirti is asking about, you know, if the, if the square footage of the lot is the same, in other words, um, one has a deeper depth and a skinnier frontage, and one has a skinnier frontage and a deeper, no, a wider frontage and a less depth, um, and, but the actual square area of the lot is the same, what's worth more? So in general terms, Kirti, if you have the same square area of a lot and the frontage is more on one of them, but the depth is less, it's probably worth more money. The um, uh, frontage is worth more money than depth. And I will show you how to do that as well when we get there, okay? So how do we do this? The rule is you always work to the subject property. The comparable is what is adjusted to equal the subject property. If the comparable feature is better, you subtract, the, you subtract the dollar value of that feature. Or if the comparable feature is worse, you add the dollar value of that feature to bring it up to the subject property. So if the comparable feature is better, you subtract the dollar value of that feature, you bring it down, okay? So 
let's just uh, for an example say that you have a um, subject property that has a one car garage okay the subject property has a one car garage the comparable property is exactly the same as the subject property except it has a two car garage so the two properties are exactly the same the subject property has a one car garage the comparable property has a two car garage you have to subtract the value of the second garage to equal it to the first um, to the sorry to the subject property that has one garage in other words you're you're equaling the comparable to the subject property you're taking the garage away and you'd have to take the dollar value away and i'm going to show you how to take the dollar dollar value away and how to do this okay how much is that second garage worth i'm going to show you that if the comparable feature is worse you add the dollar value of that feature so let's let's turn the tables now the subject property has a two car garage the comparable property is exactly the same as the subject property, except it has a one car garage. You would have to add the value of a second car garage to the comparable feature to make it equal to the subject property. Okay. So any questions on that? This is where a lot of people get confused. And so you, the trick is, is to keep in your mind, you're trying to equalize the comparable property to the subject property. So if the comparable property is better, you have to take a little bit of money away for whatever the feature is. If the comparable subject has something that is worse than the subject property, you have to add money to make it equal to the subject property. Okay, so the next steps, the TREB CMA. The TREB CMA is free and allows you a lot of flexibility to adjust for pricing, okay? There are two CMAs in TREB. There's also called what's called the TOP CMA. The TOP CMA is a product you can purchase. It does not have the flexibility of the TREB CMA, but it is faster to use. So what the TOP CMA does is you basically put in um, your subject property. It will automatically give you a bunch of comparables to choose from. You choose those comparables. It has a very, very, very limited adjustment feature for, um, uh, uh, for adjustments to properties. And then it bangs out a, um, a uh, CMA for you. It is very simple. I forget actually, I was thinking today on the way to work, I can't remember how much it costs, um, uh, but it simply does not have the flexibility of the TREB CMA. The TREB CMA is free. I recommend you stick with the TREB CMA until top CMA somehow allows you to do adjustments and stuff. It really, it really is a bit of a, um, I don't know. It really is a bit, I, I find it funny, the top CMA, they, they charge you from, they charge money for it, uh, but it doesn't come out as big a quality as the TREB CMA. So I highly recommend you do the TREB CMA and I'm only gonna take you through the TREB CMA today. So let me check the chats here. I think there was one more. How would I come up with an amount? Yeah, well, we're going, we're going to, we're absolutely uh, for Tanya and I'm not sure who else the other person is, uh, but yes, we're going to show you exactly how to come up with a, an amount. So here we go. So just let me log into Treb here. Hopefully I'm still logged in with any luck at all. And I am. So here, I think I still am anyways. Here is the Toronto Real Estate Board. So we're going to show you where to go. So search properties. And uh, oh, good. How wonderful. So for uh, Lynn, I remember you, Lynn. So if you go down here to uh, public records, yeah, to public records, I'm gonna show you here. 
in public records, when you type in an address here, okay, um, you can then, when you have this come up, what happens is, um, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you a quick one here, because it is really important. So 82 Knight Street in New Tecumseh, okay? You can see here, and can you guys see this over on the right here? I'm, I see everybody's names. I don't know. Can you guys see that on the right here where my mouse is going up and down? Can anybody see that? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, in here is where you can purchase for $5. You can get the square footage, okay? Simple as that. That's where you get it, all right? It's as simple as that to get it there. Um, now back to here. So back here, and you can see here, you have top CMA and you have CMA. You click on CMA, okay? You can see here, it has new CMA with the green um, red cross sign, the green cross sign here, new CMA. You click on new CMA. And the CMA name would probably be the address of what you're looking at. And I can't remember the address that I'm looking at, so I'm just going to put in 112 Any Street because I can't remember which one we're doing right off the top of my head. And you press continue. And it comes up with the CMA, the basics of it. Yes, 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 thank you. Um, and here we go, including the CMA. Now across the top, you see contact, subject property, salesperson, title page, cover letter, comparables, adjustments, marketing, attachment, and contents. If I scroll down, you see the same things. Okay, we're gonna go through this so that you see how to do this, okay? So the first one is a contact. If you have contacts in TREB, you can use an existing contact. I don't have any contacts in TREB. You can see here that there's uh, asterisks here. So you have to put in a first and last name. If I knew how to spell my own name, it would be very handy. Now you can fill all this stuff in if you want to. But what happens when you fill all this stuff in here? You're going to see we're going to get to title page and cover letter. What happens when you fill all this stuff in here? It comes up with all salutations and things that, um, that fill up your title page and cover letter and uh, makes them very wordy and very long. So I suggest for this session, this section here, the contact section, you only put in the seller's names. So I would only put in, if there's two sellers, put in, put in each other's sellers and Mary seller. I wouldn't bother putting anything else in here, okay? I wouldn't put in the, prim the primary address or anything because it just fills up the title page. You'll see when we come to it, okay? Subject property. Now, of course, this is what the whole idea is, is to do a market analysis for the subject property. Now, for some unbelievable reason, the Toronto Real Estate Board makes it optional whether you want to include a subject property in the CMA. I highly recommend that you include a subject property in the CMA, because that's what like, we're doing here. So you actually have to click on this square that says subject property, okay? Or else it, you don't have an option to do a subject property, okay? So you, you want the subject property in here, okay? Before we do something here, we're gonna talk about um, previous listings. So what, what you can do here is you can look up a previous listing and enter an old MLS number and it will auto-populate this. That's good news, it's gonna make it really, really fast, okay? The bad news about using a subject, uh, sorry, a previous listing is that it's old. It may not match what you have in the subject property. So remember at the very beginning, I said, you have to go see the subject property. 
just don't depend on a previous listing to figure out what the subject property is. You have to go see it, okay? Things like the age may change, the square footage may change, the quality of the finishes may change. Maybe somebody's added a kitchen may change. Maybe back to the ensuite, maybe there wasn't an ensuite 10 years ago, but it was a big bedroom and somebody added an ensuite in there. There's an extra washroom. So before you use a previous listing, for goodness sake, to, to, to make this right, please, please, please be careful about previous listings, okay? Uh, Fung Lee, would I do a CMA at RAB2? I can do one, Fung. Uh, you're not going to get a lot out of this one other than the basics. I have done them for RAB, Fung Lee. Do me a favor, Fung, please, and it's so nice to hear from you. Uh, please send me an email, Fung, so that I remember, okay? So back to the subject property. So I am going to enter a subject property here, okay? Because I'm not going to, I haven't been to a house. I, I don't know um, uh, any houses out there, to be honest. And I'm going to enter everything here and use it. Okay. And you can see that it has auto populated everything for me. Now, I have happened to pick a, a, a MLS listing that is actually relatively new. It's only four days old, um, thinking that we are going to um, be doing a CMA for this property. Um, you would not have that opportunity to pick this. Uh, and the reason why is because you're not gonna be picking an MLS number where the property is already for sale. The only one you'd be able to use is an old MLS number. But you can see here that you have to be very careful about what's in here, okay? If you picked one um, a property, how do you know that this square footage is correct here? Right? How do you know this? Okay. How do you know that the exterior is still brick and they haven't uh, put vinyl siding over it? How do you know how many garage spaces there are and six garage spaces are? You guys have to go see the property. Then you have to go through this list, right? And make the changes as necessary. Don't think of this as gospel. I am taking this because I don't have a choice. You guys need to see the subject property. If you use an old listing, go through this very carefully and make sure it's correct, okay? The description, another thing. If you're using an old MLS listing and, and auto-populating this, the description could be totally different today of what's going on. I mean, this one here says a gourmet Eden kitchen with granite counters, okay? Maybe they're not countered. Maybe they don't have granite counters anymore. Maybe way back when it, the description says melamine counters, but now they're granite counters. So I, I just can't stress it enough. Be so, so careful with your, um, with your uh, using a previous listing, okay? Another part about a previous listing, the taxes. The tax year is gonna be the previous listing year, right? and the uh, taxes are going to be a lot lower than they are today. And what it'll do here is it'll actually show you what it's sold for, okay? And so that's no good either, all right? So you have to be really, really, really careful if you are using an old listing, please. The old listing, when you, when you auto-populate from an old listing, will also auto-populate the subject property photos. Right, and so if you if you have um, not gone to the house and and or you're just being lazy and you're using the subject property uh, photos from a previous listings, these could be all wrong. It would be really bad to have the the um, uh, using the old listing and it's got all the furniture in it from the previous owners and you're showing your house to the new owners and they're going, whose house is this, right? I mean, the beds could be different, right? The kitchen could be different, living room could be different, right? All this kind of stuff to be different, okay? 
Now you'll see what will happen here is if you click in the corner here, let me just show you this again. Up here, you can just see kind of faded. It's the red X and it says delete under it. When you put this in here or in this here and or click the boxes, you can see the red delete has come up and been very obvious and you can delete those photos. Okay, and they're gone. Okay, so you can delete. Oops, sorry, I went too fast there. My mistake there. You can delete those photos. Okay, and if you wanted to, here, if you have taken your own pictures of the subject property, and I highly recommend that you do take your own pictures, then this is where you upload. So you'd simply press the upload. It takes you to where you want to add them from. You go to your desktop or your camera or wherever you've kept them, and you can upload your photos from there and upload your own photos. Taking photos of a subject property is a really, really good idea because it'll remind you of what's in it when time comes to figure out, you know, your comparables and stuff. So that is how you can change the photos if you have uh, done your own uh, photos. If you do, if there is no listing, uh, but prior listing, um, then you know what, you can enter all this stuff yourself and you have to do it all manually new stuff and ch choose the things that you need and just basically like the search on MLS. It's basically the same. You can write your own description. You can put in your own taxes. You can upload your own photos, okay, of the property. Just let me check the chats one moment. Uh, what is RAB? Oh yeah, it's Hamilton Burlington, yeah. Uh, Real Estate Association of Hamilton Burlington, it stands for. Thanks, Ellen. Um, the next night line up here is salesperson. And you can see as I scroll down, it's salesperson. And you can see it's got my stuff in here already. And I could add more things in here if I wanted to. I'm not going to worry about it. So it would upload your own information already, okay? I would probably put in my cell phone number, you know, something like that. Uh, maybe you want to put your website address in there that kind of thing so that they can check you out, okay? Title page, we're here now, title page, comparative market analysis. And it shows you, oops, I'm sorry. Go back to title page here. And it shows you the title page. And this is what I was talking about. If you put all sorts of stuff in the um, contact information, remember here, the contact information. If you put all sorts of stuff in there, it starts to load all this up in here and it gets really complicated. That's why I'm saying keep it a little more simple than that, okay? And it takes a nice picture. It takes the picture that I've used or it would take the first picture. If you have taken your own pictures, it'll take this first picture and put it on the title page. Okay, you can see it's the first picture if you've taken your own pictures, okay? Next is the cover letter. The cover letter says, and it's the same cover letter for everybody, and it is, you know, same thing. If you would have put all sorts of stuff in your contact, this gets really, really, really long, and you end up with two pages of a cover letter. So that's why I'm saying it. it's probably just keep it simple is, is what I'm trying to say here. And I'm just going to check the chat button again. Just give me one moment, please. Oh, okay. Um, so remember what I said about getting your $5 out and spending $20 for your CMA. Um, that differentiates you from most of the agents that are also preparing a CMA. Now you have to remember, when you are doing a listing presentation, most agents, unbelievably not all, most agents would have a CMA, okay? But not all of them do. Some of them just go in and say, oh, I think your house is worth $900,000 and it's all a lovely house and it's beautiful and let's list it and let's go, you know, kind of thing. That agent will lose, okay, if you have a professional CMA, okay? But what I recommend, is that you personalize your CMA, okay? Because it says here in your cover letter, it says 
Thank you for the opportunity to present this comparative market analysis, this report of current past markets, or blah, 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 blah. Every agent out there who is using the TREB CMA has the same cover letter. So can you imagine that the seller has three or four agents over, excuse me for one second. The seller has three or four agents over, has three or four CMAs, and every CMA says the same thing. Thank you for the opportunity to present this comparative market analysis. You can write your own letter here. This is a Word document, you guys. You can see up at the top, it looks just like Word. You can use italics, you can underline stuff. You can change your fonts, you can change your font size, you can center it. You can do all sorts of things in here to make it different. It's just right over it and do it as you want. And then if you like what you've written to make it stand out better, um, uh, you can select the text color. Um, you can set it as your default. Okay, so every time you do a CMA, so you only have to go through this once, but make it different so that it stands out from your competition, okay? And write, you know, something similar, but so the seller doesn't see the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to make yours stand out a little bit more. Bold the letters, make some colors in it, that kind of thing, to make it work, okay? Make it stand out a little bit. How can we change the question? I'm just looking at the chats and the question is from Reza. How can we change the cover photo? Um, okay, just one second. I'll just go back to that again, back to the subject property, Reza. And so if you have all of these pictures gone, okay, and you wanna use your own photo, Here's your upload button where you upload your photo and it'll show up, you can, re, you can show it, put your first picture in and that's gonna be your cover photo. The next one was Gisela. I did a, Gisela says, I did a pre-listing CMA recently to a clients who had sold and bought properties before the other agents. They were pretty impressed and said that none of the other agents they worked with prepared one for them. Holy geez, Gisela, hopefully you got that listing. Um, did you get the listing, Gisela? I hope so. So can you believe it? Yes, I did, she says, my goodness. So she went to a listing presentation and nobody else had a CMA, unbelievable, okay? They're, they're so important. A, 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 a CMA and a listing presentation are the two keys to getting a listing, you guys. They really, really are. Um, uh, uh, Aaron is going to be teaching, I believe, in two weeks um, how to prepare a listing presentation. So that's wonderful news, Gisela. Congratulations and thank you for the comment. Just let me check chats again. Uh, no problem, Reza. You're welcome. Um, so salesperson, we got that. We got that. We've talked about the cover letter. Make it stand out. So in Gisela's case, Hopefully she made it a little different. So if somebody else did show up with a CMA, she stands out and then you can set them as defaults, okay? And now we're at comparables here. And here we are for comparables, right? And so how can we do this? Hopefully you guys have done some research, okay? That you've researched the comparables that you want to use before before you get to this stage. And I have researched the comparables that I want to use, okay? Um, uh, add by MLS number is right here. This is by far the easiest way to do it. Add by MLS number. So just bear with me while I throw these into here. Okay, so hopefully you guys, I'll leave that for a second because I have a feeling some of you guys are writing this stuff down. So I'll leave that for a second if you want to um, uh, write those three comparables down. 
so that later on you can follow along and try it on your own if you like. So I'll just give it a second or two here. So I have done a little bit of homework um, uh, and picked three um, properties that to me, in my uh, limited knowledge of what's going on out there, um, have some idea that it looked reasonably similar. Ideally, I've been to these comparables. That would be really, really, really nice. Um, it certainly is nice to be able to say to a seller, I was in this house and it really compares favorably with you instead of I found this house and it's a picture on MLS. Uh, but sometimes it's hard to, to do that admittedly. Um, for the experienced agents out there, um, like I see Don still on with us. You know, Don has probably seen a few thousand houses in her lifetime. So she's going to probably be able to pick comparables that that um, she's kind of familiar with. Whereas for brand new agents, this is a much more difficult chore, especially since the last two and a half months have been very difficult to see um, the houses out there at all. So I'm going to add these to my CMA. Oh, and it, I, an, an invalid one. How wonderful. Just let me make sure I got these right here. Oh, sorry, I typed this wrong here. My mistake. There, that looks better. Sorry about that. And you can see the houses that it has. It has the three houses that I've listed here, okay? So I picked the same area because my subject property was in Milton, okay? And you can see the three. And here we go for the adjustments part. And this is the big question is how do you adjust, right? So 255 McCready is the subject property. The comparable is 290 Kincardine, okay? The municipality is Milton, the municipality is Milton, the community is Scott, the community is Scott. Scott, this is sold. This price here, I wanna show you this here, is empty, sorry, has the list price because I have picked an existing listing, okay? Normally this price would not be here because you're going to a house that is not listed, right? And so normally this would not be here. This is four bedrooms and four bedrooms. 10 rooms and 12 rooms. Now, when it comes to rooms, does everybody know how to count rooms in the GTA? Does every salesperson, 51,000 salespeople know how to count rooms? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that 95% of all real estate agents in the GTA have no clue how to count rooms. Don't go buy rooms, okay? Simple as that okay washrooms three and three kitchens one and one family room yes and no full basement unfinished unfinished they're, so they're both unfinished gas gas brick brick attached attached two two uh four four uh, four and two parking spaces lot frontage 38 and 38 oh my goodness gracious we've got a pretty good um a pretty good um, comparable here, don't we? My goodness, I actually did a little bit of homework. If you recall from the list that we had discussed earlier, time is one of the things that you should look at. We've got the right location. We've got a pretty similar looking house around here, okay? Time. And unbelievably in the TREB lineup of things that you can adjust for, Time is not one of the standard ones, okay? So what you have to do here is you have to add a field and you click on add a field. Now when you click on add a field, you have all sorts of different things that you can, cha that you can choose from to have other adjustments, okay? All sorts of different things in here. And what we're looking for here is sold date. Here's the sold date. Okay. And the sold date here, it sold in October, in the middle of October in 2019. 
sorry, I had to do that. Um, the sold date was October of 2019, okay? So before we go any further with this, I'm gonna show you up here, you have a save button. And I highly recommend that you save once in a while as you're going through here so that you don't lose everything that you've done. Okay, so it's just saving it for a moment. My CMA is saved, hooray. So what we can do here now is we can go back to here, okay? And we can go to market stats. Of course, it wants me back, wants me to log in again. So I'm gonna show you how to do this, just for those people who don't know where it is. Bear with me while I just log in. So, and here we have Market Watch right here. Just let me go back in one second here to our home page. So here's our home page here. Here is Sorry, just let me move this market stats here. And here is Market Watch. And in Market Watch, you can see the full report. Okay. And you can go all the way down almost to the bottom. it's down around page 20 or 25 or something. And we can look at Halton Hills. We can look at Milton. It's right here in Milton, right? And the average selling price of a home, the benchmark price of a home for a single family detached is 968,000, right? Okay, everybody with me so far? You're all good? Awesome. And we're gonna go out of here. And now we're going to go to the archives. And we are going to go to 2019 archives and we're gonna to go to October for the archives. And here we are in Market Watch for October. And we're going to go all the way down again. I have uh, something on the right side of my screen that you can't see that I can't just whip it down. So just uh, give me one sec to get there. Oops, too far, sorry. And here we are again in Milton. Okay, and in October of last year, the single family detached were nine 27. So basically we've had a $40,000 increase in value between today and last October. Okay. So now I'm back on my screen here and I have a, I have today and I have October, I have a $40,000 difference in value. Okay, so they're worth more today, right, than they were back in October. So I have to adjust for time, and I have a $40,000 adjustment in time. Okay. And then you can put in comments. I can put in from... October to today, values on average have increased by $40,000. Okay. You don't have to put a comment in but if you don't want to, all right? But that's how you can find the difference in time. 
So let me check the chats here. So uh, Ella, it'll be posted on the, uh, the whole presentation will be posted on our YouTube training channel. Okay, so I'm not sure who Raksh is, but should it be a percentage? Well, you can figure out, sorry, I clicked twice there. You can figure out the percentage and then figure it out that way too. I'm taking a, just a bit of a guess here. You're right, you could be more accurate with a percentage, but roughly speaking, you know, it's gonna be about that. So if you put in a percentage here where the 40,000 is, nothing's gonna happen. It won't adjust for anything, okay? So you can see here that this house sold for 900,000. Everything is virtually equal in the house, except for time. And you have a $40,000 adjustment for that, okay? That's how you adjust for time. The next comparable. Here's our next one. So here we have Milton. I have a different community. I'm not gonna get into different communities right now. I will show you but, uh, how to do it, but I'm not gonna get into it right now. We have four bedrooms, four bedrooms, nine and 10, four and three, uh, one and one, yes and yes, full, unfinished and finished. Okay, so one's got a finished basement and one doesn't, this one is not. So we have to make an adjustment for that and we have to make an adjustment for the garage as well because this has got two and this has got one. This is, has a finished basement and this is an unfinished basement. So how do you do this right? Okay, so going to go back to here and we're going to go back to here and we're going to go to here. So here we are in our home screen again and we're going to search properties. Okay, we're going to go to search and everybody should be pretty familiar with this. So just before I do this, bear with me for a second here. I want to just save this before I go any further. Sorry, don't want to lose what we've done here. So here we are, and we are looking for the comparables that have sold, of course, right? It's not what's available. We're looking for a residential freehold that is unavailable, that is for sale. Continue. We're looking for Halton. And we're looking for Milton. And we're looking at homes between 900,000 and a million bucks. We're looking for a um, we're looking for a detached home, and we're looking for homes between two thousand and twenty five hundred square feet. I know that from my comparables. I've chosen three comparables that are all two thousand to twenty five hundred. I did not pay the five dollars, just to be honest with you. And I am looking for an unfinished basement. An unfinished basement, okay? And the comparable has a two-car garage. I'm sorry, the subject property has a two-car garage, right? And we're going to submit that, okay? These are all the answers. You will see that what has come up here, can everybody see the statistics button here, okay? the statistics button. The statistics button is telling me that the sold price right here, line three, the sold price, 926,000. This is telling me that in Halton, in Milton, for homes between 900 and a million dollars, detached homes between 2,000 and 2,500 square feet with an unfinished basement and a two-car garage sell for $926,000 on average. Okay? I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna go back here.
And the only thing I'm going to change, because we're trying to determine the value of the finished basement. Um, the only thing I'm changing is the finished basement. I haven't changed anything else, right? We're still in Halton and Milton. We're still in detached. We're still 2,000 to 2,500. We still have a two car garage, finished basement, right? Instead of unfinished basement. Submit that. And once again, the statistics button shows up here and you click on statistics and it is sold price is 947, 980. We'll call it 948, okay? So the first one was 926,000 with an unfinished basement, and we have a finished basement of 948,000, okay? So that difference is $22,000 difference on average for, that, for, the, for those kinds of houses with basically the same parameters. We have the same price, we have a detached, we have, um, uh, uh, 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, right? We have um, two car garages, okay? And we have a difference of $22,000. So when I go back to my adjustments page, I now have for a um, finished and unfinished basement, right? This is finished, this is unfinished, right? I have a $22,000 adjustment that I have to do. Does anybody want to take a guess if I add or do I subtract the $22,000? Subtract, subtract, subtract. Absolutely. Good work, everybody. Uh, subtract, subtract, subtract. Subtract is correct, but I just see one more question in here. Uh, I'm just reading the chat, you guys. Just give me one sec. Right. So Gisela is asking, would I use currently listed properties? You can use a currently listed property, but as we all know, it's the sold. So Gisela's question is, question is, would I use a currently listed property as a comparable? You can use a currently listed property as a comparable, but as we all know and have been taught, what is the value of the property is sold? Um, you know, so you can put in the, um, you can put in the, um, uh, 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 sorry, an available property that you think is comparable, but I would be very, very careful in determining a value using that as well. Um, it can really throw things off if it's overpriced or something like that. Uh, I, I try to recommend not doing that. I would just try to stick with the souls. Okay. So. Um, we had a minus, what did I say? Minus 22,000. And you have to put the minus sign in um, for that, okay? We now have the garage spaces, right? And the garage is a big one as well. So what do we do? We go back uh, to here, right? Um, sorry, uh, yes, and so now we have a finished basement. We have two. We know that with a finished basement, okay, um, that we have a price of 948,000 because we found it already, right? So now all we're gonna do now is change the garage spaces to one and one because the, the comparable property only has one garage space and we're gonna submit that. And we have all of one statistic at 925. Now, I wanted to break, break you, bring you through this one because one statistic is not a trend. You can't use this, okay? It's as simple as that, all right? What you want to do, so let me close this. I, I did this on purpose. What I want to show you here is that there's only three returns, okay? 
it's not a good enough trend, all right? When you are trying to determine what the value differences are by using this method, there are two very, very, very important considerations that you must keep in mind. One, you need a reasonable number of returns to have the um, trend showing. For when we did the um, when we did the finished and unfinished basement, we had 70 returns and 90 returns for finished and unfinished. That's a good trend. Okay, three is not good enough. It's as simple as that. Um, you need to have a reasonable a number of solds, and I think probably you need 15 or 18 somewhere in there to get some kind of an idea of of an actual change in value. You gotta have a big number. However, I said there were two parts. One is you can't be too low. The second, and it's just as important, is you can't be too high. Your count cannot be over 200, okay? The reason it can't be over 200 is because the difference is only going to show um, the, the lowest price 200. It's gonna take the first 200. So it's gonna take the lowest only. So you have to be maybe above 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, but you gotta be below 200, okay? So I'm gonna show you what exactly I'm talking about here. Submit. And I'm gonna go back to statistics here. And it shows that there's three counts, but it shows only one sold. Okay, so you can have it over 200 as long as your solds here are under 200 or else it skews the average because it only takes the lowest 200. So you have to be careful at the top end and you have to be careful at the low end. So in this case here, where we're at in my... Um, uh, screen here is I don't have a value for garage spaces using the statistics method. Okay. So what do you do now? What do you do? Oh my goodness gracious. John's told you that, you know, you got to adjust for garages. What do you do to figure out the garage space difference? Well, experience counts, no question about it. Um, but I was not always an experienced real estate agent. And what I used to do for when this kind of scenario came up way back when, and I'm going way back now, is I used to go to Home Depot and, uh, or a home hardware. And I would drive there and I would go in and I would go to the garage door section of home hardware. And I would talk to an expert in home hardware and say, so how much does it cost to build a garage anyways? And I would talk to them about what I'm doing. I, oh, I'm adding on to an existing garage. Um, you know, I want electricity in the garage. Um, a heated floor would be nice in the garage, though rare. Um, you know, whatever, whatever you wanted to do, you can go talk to people about this kind of stuff, okay? You can talk to other agents about this kind of stuff. You can talk to your manager about this kind of stuff. But my first question to you is going to be, well, have you done the statistics? I had picked Milton here. The last CMA that I did, I used Vaughn. And in Vaughn, it came up with the statistics for the difference between single and double car garages, just like that. Why? Because in Vaughn, there's older houses and newer houses, right? The newer houses all have two car garages. The older houses all have one car garage, right? In Milton, where it's basically, to a large extent, a relatively new community. And, and for those of you who are watching who are from Milton and say there's a beautiful downtown area in Milton that's really old, I agree with you. I'm not trying to get into an argument here, but it is because of the area not available. So what do you do? You talk to people. Go to a hardware store and talk to them about it. Go to Home Depot and talk to them about it. You know, for example, you may have a kitchen that is in one house is absolutely terrible, but the rest of the house is really nice. 
and your subject property, your kitchen, your sorry, your house is very, very nice, just like your comparable, except your kitchen is much, 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 much nicer than the comparable property. Well, you can, you can, that's a really, really hard thing to adjust for on statistics because you can't put in nice kitchen, bad kitchen, right? So what do you do? You go to Ikea and find out how much it costs to get a new kitchen, you know, and then you can put it, put that in. The rule is for uh, when you talk to people about materials, so your garage materials cost you, I don't know, $10,000. The, the rule of thumb is you double your material cost to get the labor cost. So if your garage materials cost $10,000, you've gone to Home Depot and the guy you've spoken to at Home Depot says, oh, materials for a garage, yeah, 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 they're about 10 grand. Well, then you know roughly that it's 20,000. You go to Ikea and they tell you that, you know, a new kitchen is $12,000. Well, you know now that you're going to do it for $25,000 for your kitchen when it's all said and done. Um, you know, we talked about the uh, ensuite washroom. If you wanted to adjust for that, if that's the only thing and, and you thought that it was a fair thing, you can go to Home Depot and price out all the materials for a um, ensuite washroom and double it to get the rough cost of, of what it would be for an adjusted value. That is how you do it without a um statistics being available to you okay now is that leg work yeah oh my gosh it's work oh dear over the last two months you would have had a really tough time getting that couldn't you but today guess what everything is open today you can go into home depot today and home hardware today where, where i used to do real estate the closest um, home hardware was a 40 minute drive away and we would drive up there and go talk to them and that's how you learn. And this is a learning experience, okay? So we, I happen to know that an extra garage with electricity, with a poured concrete floor, with insulation in it is about $20,000. So we're trying to compare the um, uh, cost of a single car garage to a double car garage, it's 20,000 bucks. Do I add or subtract the $20,000? Anybody want to try? Add or subtract the 20,000 bucks. One person says add, another person says add. Add, very good. Add it is, wonderful. Everyone's catching on here, awesome. So we're gonna add the 20,000 bucks. Now, once again, what's missing? Time. You always have to check time, sold date. Sold date. Well, this property sold on uh, May 4th. I'm not doing an adjustment for May 4th to today. I can't believe there'll be a difference. So I'm not even going to look at it. So next property. So that's your adjustments, next one. Here we have Milton and Milton and Scott. Oh, and by the way, sorry, I'll just go back to this one. I had Milton and Milton, and then I had Scott and Dempsey. You can do the exact same thing using the statistics button for Dempsey. We talked about different locations. You can do exactly the same thing. I can put in the exact same stuff here. Uh, Treb, I think I'm in this one here. I can go here. I can go here, I can go Halton, Milton, and then I could put in Scott here. Uh, Scott here. Let's just do it for fun. So now I'm continuing. I've got Scott in here now. We've got a detached home, 2025. Um, we have an unfinished basement in ours. And we have a two-car garage in ours. Right? And we have submit 11. It's not, not a great statistic, but let's have a look. Seven sales, it's not great. Average is 921. And 
and we're just going to go back here. We're going to leave everything exactly the same, except what was it? Was it uh, Dempsey, right? Uh, Dempsey will continue. 13 sales, not a lot of sales, uh, but we'll have a look just for fun. 921. They're both 921. So using, so there's, there's where you can see it. Um, we'll just go back to here. Oops. We had Scott and Dempsey, the average sale price for both of these are the same. So there you go. Um, just to show you how you can do that real quickly. And here we have comparable number three. And here we have um, four and three, 10 and eight, washrooms, kitchens, family room. This is a finished basement. What was the adjustable for a finished basement? It was uh, 20, 22,000, right? And so we have to take away 22,000 for this one because it's finished and the other one is not finished. Uh, this one has a double car garage, lot frontage is about the same. And by the way, you can do lot frontage exactly the same. And uh, you're gonna add a field for time. Sold date, February to now. So I showed you already how to do the sold date by going through market archives and now, uh, but we know that from the middle of February to today, we have about a 9% drop in value, right? Almost a 10% drop in value, but I have no idea what it is for Milton. So we can put a little, I'm not gonna take you through the exercise, it's gonna take us too long, but I think I've showed you how to market watch, how to do that, but uh, let's just, I don't know, let's just say $5,000 difference just for fun. I'm just, I'm just making that up, but just for fun that we have an adjustment. Okay, I'm not going to take you through the whole time thing again. Okay, so that's the adjustments section of the CMA. I'm going to save this so I don't lose my work. Okay, and just let me check the chat button one moment. Yes. Sure. Sorry about that. Well, of course, Mona. Mona says you have to add enough space to add the garage, but yeah, of course. That would be a bad, that would be a bad um, uh, comparable, but it still puts you into the ballpark. Um, uh, Daniel is saying Scott and Dempsey, but I think I just answered that question for you, Daniel. Um, Daniel saying Scott and Dempsey. It would be ideal, Daniel, you're absolutely right to have another comparable um, in Scott instead of Dempsey. But as I just showed you, by looking at the average sales in Scott and Dempsey, the average sale price comes out about the same. So I don't see a huge problem with using the two of them. Now, what I want to know in Milton, and I, honest to God, you guys, I've never been to Milton, what I maybe want to drive around Daniel and see if it has the same kind of amenities as Scott. Um, you know, for most of you folks uh, listening today, um, you know, you're going to know the difference between Richmond Hill and Newmarket. Um, you're going to know the difference between Rosedale and Brampton. Um, you know, you're going to know those differences. I have no idea about Scott and Dempsey. I would expect, looking at the quick look that we had, that Scott and Dempsey are probably pretty close because the average sale price is pretty close. But honestly, Daniel, I have not looked even at a map to see if Daniel was even close to Scott. I, I really have no idea. I'm just trying to show you how to do it. Um, whether I'm totally accurate or not by using these comparables, uh, I would much prefer to have picked a comparable in Scott, uh, but I wanted to show you the Dempsey Scott so that you can see the difference and how to find it. So that if you do have to go outside of your present location, like I said at the beginning, if I have one house that's exactly the same in Newmarket and I have another house that's exactly the same in Georgina, 
and I want to see what houses are selling, like the two subject property and the comparable house are exactly the same, but in two different neighborhoods, boy, that's only one adjustment that I have to do just to get the average price. Boy, that's great to be able to do that. That's, that's wonderful. Remember, the less number of adjustments that you have, the more accurate your sale price is going to be. So let me look at the chats again. Okay, good, no problem. Uh, next. So we're in adjustments, marketing. So this is where a lot of agents don't do anything and you can certainly do stuff. What is your marketing plan to sell the house? Right now, if you had a listing presentation that you've uh, made for yourself, then you probably don't have to do this. I would highly recommend that you have a listing presentation instead of doing this. But if you're lazy and you don't have a listing presentation, you want to make some bullets down here, you can add all sorts of stuff into the marketing section here. And you can set it as a default if you want to. Attachments. Attachments. Here's another way you can differentiate yourself from your competition. You can add attachments in here so you could upload and you could pick a file. And for example, I've seen nice attachments that says tips for sellers as an attachment. Uh, what to do uh, when you have an offer. Um, uh, recommendations for movers and for painters and for uh, home cleaners, uh, for cleaners and uh, maybe 1-800-GOT-JUNK uh, contacts and anything like that that you can think about for attachments. I've also seen one that in the attachments, for those of you who have experience, I've seen testimonials put into attachments so that um, you're writing in happily sold 146, you know, Jane Street, Mr. and Mrs. Seller uh, has beautiful, you know, blah, 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 sold a wonderful house just like this last week. You know, you can put all sorts of stuff into attachments and you just upload and choose from your file, you browse in your file to, to, um, to choose your attachments. Contents. So here are contents. Just before we do this, I'm gonna save. Don't forget to save. And so content. So now we're at the bottom of it, okay? So we've gone at the blue bar at the top, we've gone through all of these steps. And if you think, oh my goodness gracious, I forgot to put something in my cover letter, you can just click the cover letter. Oh, I forgot something in comparables or adjustments. I can just click to those adjustments, okay? Oh, I wanted to add something in my attachments. You can add it here, okay? And contents. Contents is a little bit funny because you'll see, I'm sure all of you can see my mouse. When I move it over to here, it changes into kind of that drag thing that you can usually drag stuff around if you're in a Word document. In fact, this is a live page here, okay? And I can get rid of stuff, okay? So do I wanna get rid of my title page? No. My cover letter, no. My table of contents, no. My subject property details, no. Oh, I don't really need to add any pictures. Why am I showing him pictures? It's the pictures of his own house, right? So why do I need to show pictures anyways? I'm sitting in his living room showing him my CMA. I don't think he needs to see the pictures. Side-by-side -side property comparison, okay? The side-by-side -side property comparison, that's probably a good idea so people can see it. The comparison, comparable summary, that's a good idea so that the seller can see it. The adjustments and notes, yeah, we want to show the adjustments and notes that we have made. Do I need to show client full, um, uh, client full MLS data sheets? Well, you might want to. Okay, it's gonna print three more pages. Can you do the client thumbnail? Sure. Do you wanna show the pictures of the other houses? It's up to you. Maybe, maybe not. Flyer, this is a quick flyer. If somebody, if somebody had a really fast synopsis, you can put in a flyer. Do you wanna put in the roadmap to show where everything is? How about the market statistics report, days on market, your marketing plan? Okay, so you can add or take all this stuff away, even though it's got this crazy little thing here, you can add and take away everything that you want, okay? 
save. Okay, so now we have completed it. Okay, so let's just go up to comparable summary. And hopefully it's going to work with any luck at all. And I don't know why it's taking so long, but there you have it. Not sure why it won't do that. I'm going to open up something else here. Oh, it's making the whole thing. I guess we just got to give it a minute here. So, so while that is doing its thing, um, questions. Oh, wait a sec before you ask questions. So up here, in the on the right hand side, okay, you have download, where you can download it and save it to your computer. You can send it as an email to your client, or you can print it if you want to print it out. Okay, you can share it with your client so that it, basically it's the same thing. Send and share with client is the same thing. So um, I would recommend sending it. And so you can download it, but let's just see if it has got it together here. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, it's not going to do us much good if I can't show you that, is it? Save it again. It appears that it has had a little bit of a problem. Try again. Well, you guys, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know why it's uh, it's having a technical difficulty here. Maybe somebody has a suggestion. Let me check the chats. Uh, no, it does, Olivera it does not expire in two weeks when sending by email. Uh, please try preview. It works after. Maybe you need to sign in again. Yeah. Let's see, try preview, printing preview, yeah. It won't do it for some reason. It's still saving. So I can log out. I'm hoping that it has saved it all. I think it probably has. Let me just try it once, guys. I'm going to uh, log out of here. Uh, just have to get out of here, just one sec. Hopefully it's saved, but we'll just go through it here and just see um, if it did it this way. It seems like a good exercise up to this moment in time. It's sort of a shame I can't show you the finished product. Count on Treb to fail right when I need it the most, right? Oh, good. It actually works. Sorry about that, you guys. I don't know what Treb was doing there. Just, um, it was uh, doing its thing, I guess. So there is the comparable summary. There it is. You've got the average sale price um, here. Um, you've got your comparables. You've got your subject property. And you've got an adjusted price of $935,000 is what we've got as the adjusted price. Okay, and so in here now, we can go through it, but uh, there's your whole um, CMA. What you would do now is you would download it, 
You would save it to your computer. And once again, can you stand out from your competition? Yes, you could print it. You could go to the dollar store. You could buy a binder. You could close it up, um, make a nice red file for a cover for it so that when you hand it to your seller, he's got something that looks really nice and stands out differently from your competition. Okay, that's how that works. And you can look at everything again. It's got it all. It's got it all here. This is how it all kind of looks, you know, and, um, you know, you can download it and then print it out. So, so there it is. Uh, just let me check the chats and then one more thing. Yeah, you can download it and email it to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I signed in again. Thank you for that, Maheen. That worked. So uh, that's how you do it. So let me go back to here. So we went to the Treb CMA. We, we went to and did all this. How did I learn this? So as many of you know, I have not done a CMA in the Toronto Real Estate Board. I came from the Sudbury Real Estate Board. And in the Toronto Real Estate Board, there is an excellent, excellent, excellent training video called creating a CMA in Stratus. When you are in your home page of uh, the Toronto Real Estate Board, you can see down here it says videos. Okay. And in videos, I think right now there's about 40 training videos. There's all sorts of great videos there. And once again, you're looking for creating a CMA in Stratus. Okay. And it's about a 50 minute video. And it's how I learned how to do CMAs in the Toronto Real Estate Board. And videos right here will take you there for creating a CMA in Stratus. If you haven't done one of these before, I highly recommend you watch this video. Um, it's a woman who takes you through it and it basically does a lot of what I've just told you. Okay. Couple more things. How do you know that the information provided from a previous listing is, is correct? I think I hammered it into you at the very beginning. For goodness sake, you guys, be careful when you're using previous listings to use it as your subject property. You're going to get into trouble. Okay. Oops. And um, practice makes perfect. So... Practice on your own house. If you haven't done one before, do it on your own house. Figure out how much the value is. Okay, don't trust what your next door neighbor is saying. You're the expert. Um, when you have a value, does it make sense? All right, have you done it right? All right, um, I can have a manager proofread your CMA, okay? I have definitely proofread CMAs and practices uh, out there. More than happy to proofread a CMA for you to make sure that it's accurate. Make it stand out, make it different. You guys personalize it to your own, um, make it yourself, use that set as defaults, use different colors, use different bolds and italics and underlines and make it stand out from your competition. There's a lot of competition out there. The question I always ask and I always ask new agents this and I'm ask, I'll ask old agents this here being in the business as well. What are you doing to differentiate yourself from your competition all right make sure and then present it to the seller now i had one person come back to me about two years ago who said they didn't get the listing and i said oh that's too bad you had such a nice cma i reviewed the whole thing and you know what he said to me he said yeah but i didn't and so he had created it kind of forgotten what he did the seller had asked him all sorts of questions and he couldn't answer the questions. For goodness sake, you guys, make sure you know what you've done here, please. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, it's actually happened to me once, so I thought I'd better put that in there as well.